Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. New Flight Wave drone introduced. Robotic Skies raises venture capital. And Skyhopper cargo drone being developed in Scotland. Hi, I'm Brie Cross. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI. A California-based startup company plans to introduce a new, long-range, high-endurance vertical takeoff aircraft designed and manufactured in the U.S. Flight Wave Aerospace Systems says that the aircraft is designed to bring new capabilities to customers who need a sustained aerial presence in high wind, maritime, or terrestrial missions. Flight Wave's Flight Wave Edge UAS requires no nets, no catapults, and no cumbersome ground equipment, according to the company. The Edge's quick, tool-free assembly, payload swapping, and click-to-fly touchscreen tablet controller means users are flying vertically or horizontally in a few minutes. FlightWave says it is dedicated to offering cost-effective ways for government agencies, private companies, or nonprofit organizations to protect assets or monitor the environment. Quote, we're in the UAS business to make a difference, said FlightWave CMO Edmund Cronin. The edge is ideal for mapping, remote patrol and surveillance, ecosystem monitoring, and other scenarios calling for affordable, long-range eyes in the sky. The Edge isn't just a drone, it's an airborne development platform. Flight Wave is the only company with an open source platform to integrate new sensors, he added. The Edge will make its public debut next month. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Kratos Defense and Security Solutions recently completed a flight test series evaluating the next evolution of the UTAP-22 MAKO unmanned aerial system that was first introduced and demonstrated in late 2015. The MAKO has been enhanced with a suite of mission systems typically employed on manned aircraft and now integrated with the unmanned MAKO drone system. The MIT Technology Review has revealed its annual list of innovators under 35. The Drone Code project is honored to announce that Lorenz Meyer, the creator of the PX4 project, has been recognized by Technology Review as a 2017 innovator for his work. Meyer created the PX4 flight stack platform for drones and released it as open source in 2011. Virginia Tech, a public land-grant university, is looking for a UAS safety manager to support and enable the use of unmanned aircraft systems at Virginia Tech by faculty, staff, and students. The UAS safety manager is responsible for overseeing the safety of the UAS flight operations conducted by Virginia Tech and reports to the director of the Mid-Atlantic Aviation Partnership. During two aircraft crash exercises, members of the 812th Civil Engineer Squadron teamed with the Emerging Technologies Combined Test Force to increase their emergency response capabilities using small UAS. Through the exercise scenario, the Edwards Fire Department at Edwards Air Force Base in California and the 812th Explosive Ordnance Disposal Flight were able to respond to a simulated crash B-52 Stratofortress on Rogers Dry Lake. After being granted permission by the FAA, the Department of the Interior recently used a fixed-wing UAS to fly over an active wildfire. The U.S. Forest Service says this was the first time that the FAA allowed a UAS fly over a fire BV loss. UAS pilot Stephen Stroud flew the UAS in the Modoc National Forest in northeastern California over a Parker II fire covering over 19 miles and more than 500 acres. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Robotic Skies has raised a round of venture capital financing. The capital will accelerate the expansion of the Robotic Skies maintenance network for high-end commercial unmanned aircraft systems. Robotic Skies is a brokered global network of more than 150 independently owned and operated repair stations that have the aviation expertise to provide maintenance and repairs on commercial unmanned systems. Robotic Skies draws on only the best FAA and Aviation Authority approved maintenance organizations 
currently maintaining manned aircraft to offer comprehensive field service programs designed to keep UAS flying safely, efficiently, and affordably. Quote, we are very excited that this group of experienced investors recognizes the unique solutions that Robotic Skies brings to the emerging unmanned aerospace market and decide to join our team, said Robotic Skies CEO Brad Hayden. Robotic Skies markets its services to commercial UAS manufacturers and enterprise fleet operators. Launched in the spring of 2014, the company has built an impressive portfolio of clients who manufacture or operate complex unmanned systems, ranging from high-end industrial multi-rotors to optionally piloted aircraft. A group of entrepreneurial UK engineers has plans to build a mid-mass logistics drone for global markets. The system will be aimed initially at remote and isolated communities, but is planned to be fully capable of near-urban operations in due time. Skyhopper is an electrically powered tri-fan design to be constructed at Prestwick in the west of Scotland. Its avionics are being developed in Hampshire in south-central England. Cargo mass load is approximately 220 pounds. The Skyhopper team brings together aeronautical engineers, certification and design specialists, electric machine designers, and advanced battery developers. Its promoters stress that the project will follow a carefully managed step-by-step -step approach. With its thinly inhabited landscape and coast, the west of Scotland offers a unique territory to develop beyond visual line-of-sight potential while testing autonomous flight capabilities. The Skyhopper project commercial plan includes unmanned delivery networks that set up local communities as franchises for aero parks, locally owned assets through which multiple Skyhopper missions are flown, creating revenue for local communities. The end-to-end -end innovation of the project extends to its funding methods. So far, early prototyping has been privately funded. The founders have invested their own money along with some initial sponsorship funding. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.